Welcome to Electron Online, and here's the last part on our series Osmosis and here we're going to look at the freezing process in order to separate the salts or the solutes from the solvent, in this case water. So even though it's not directly an osmosis process, again the relationship is there in that in this case again we want to separate the water from the salt water. And one way in which we can do that is freezing. If we simply have a batch of water like that, containing a lot of salt like seawater, and remove heat from it under refrigeration, you put it into a big cooler, you start uh, making it really cold, then ice will begin to form on top, of course, the, the uh, freezing point of the, of the uh, salt water will be lower than 0 degrees centigrade or 32 degrees Fahrenheit because of the infusion of the solute in there, but uh, nevertheless make it cold enough, ice will begin to form and start building up, and that ice layer will be almost completely free of the solute of the salts that are in the water, which is amazing. So when you go to the Arctic Ocean and you have uh, ice floating on the surface of the ocean, most of that ice is free of the salts of the ocean. You can actually break pieces off and, and, and melt it in your mouth and, and use the water to drink from, which is really interesting that actually that process of freezing will only freeze water molecules and not the solute molecules that are in there. Now, it turns out that it's not a practical process that would potentially solve a lot of problems. Just pump seawater from the oceans, put them in big coolers, let it freeze. The process is very slow, and of course, it takes a lot of energy. You have to refrigerate, cool the, the water down quite a bit. In a way, if you, if you think about evaporation, which takes a whole lot more energy than freezing, from that perspective, this process should be more economical from an energy perspective, but the process of freezing takes a long time, it's a very slow process, it does not produce a lot of water in great quantities, and so therefore it's not a practical method. It may be a practical method in limited quantities, but not a practical method at a large industrial scale where you're trying to provide water for millions of people. Nevertheless, if you didn't know, when you freeze salt water, you get a nice layer of fresh water, frozen ice. Well, it's not fresh water, but you get frozen ice that's almost completely free of salt. One more additional problem by doing that is that since it's floating on top of salt water, there will be a layer of salt uh, at the bottom and from any oversplash, there may be some salt near the top when you remove it. And so that needs to be washed off, otherwise there will be some a rem remnants of the solute, some remnants of the salt left when you try to use the ice as drinking water. So you do have to kind of rinse it out before you actually use it at that point. But again, there you go. That's how we remove solute from the solvent in this process.